Alan, pull yourself together already. It's time to feast! Sit down at the table with Andrew Ryan and Ellen Chu on Feast Meets West. Hello and welcome to Feast Meets West. Hello. I was welcome like, to Feast Meets West. <laughs> what do you want today, Ellen Chu? You know, today we have a busy day because there there are so many holidays to celebrate. That and is I right. I didn't know that in March it's just a very celebratory mo- month. Apparently, every month is very celebratory. But I we just think didn't know March it. is so special. It is uh, because of the 19th yeah. of March. Exactly. It's so important. This is the most important month of the year. That's like four days off of the Ides of March. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen Chu has her own Ides of March. Uh-huh. I have my calendar marked like, you know, the most important day. <laughs> it's is Ellen Chu's 18th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I write 16. Oh, okay? 16. Oh, I'm two so years. sorry. Which is really awesome. Awkward because our show has been on the air. We've been working together on the air for nearly, oh my goodness, 16? is it 17? Oh my, we passed 17 <laughs> already? Yes. We had, well, we had our sweet 16 last year. Oh, that's right. Yes. Oh. Are we on air for 17 years already? Almost, almost. In RTI? Yeah, in August. August I've been this sitting year. in the studio <laughs> for 17 years. She's not even got up to, to, to go and eat something or take a nap I've or go to the bathroom. I've been raising a teenager in here. <laughs> oh, my. And your teenager's name is Andrew Ryan. <laughs> exactly. And this is the topic. You know, I feel that if I can sit here for 17 years, I must be a superwoman. Well, I think so. That's mm. why we're doing a whole show called Super Women. Okay. Wait, but why is it women? Women. There are a lot of women. That is right. Okay. Not only one superman. There's yes. only one superman, but there are... Lots and lots of super women. We never celebrate International Superman Day. We only... <laughs> There's so many days celebrating men. That is know? true. That is true. Don't you think so? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. I think okay. we're... This is the is this is the era of women. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you're it in charge is. today, Alan Chu. What are we doing? Okay. So we're going to talk about International Women's Day, which is coming on March the 8th. All right. Should we check out what's on our menu today? Definitely. In our first course, we're going to open up the Chinese Almanac to find out about an upcoming two-week micro-season in which the lightning awakes the hibernating insects. Ooh. In our second course, I'm going to be visiting a foundation that helps survivors of domestic violence. And you can find out how many women they help every year. Plus, what do you think is the most plentiful item in their pantry? Mm. Mm. And in our third and final course, we'll bring episode one of Give It a Chai. Give it a chai. Give it a chai. That's right. Kirti Sudaran was inspired by the foods her mother made when she was growing up, and she decided to go out in search of Indian food in Taipei. Mm-mm-mm. So, to begin with, we have a song. It is for all all of the women out there it's called pay respect to the women okay? that's to right. the ladies Jingyuren is by vivian xu xu ruo xuan <laughs> Okay, in the first course, we are going to talk about this micro season called Jing Chi. It's coming Monday. Jing Chi. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. For American dude <laughs> correcting me. Am I Chinese? Do you know I have so few opportunities to do that? Like it never happens. So when okay. it does happen, <laughs> you just kind of take the spot. That's right. I right. jump on it. Exactly. But I have to. Can I? Can I speak out on your behalf? Sure. Because it is Super Women Day, so I have to say something on your behalf. This character. Character, we it's called Jing Chi. <laughs> <laughs> was, On this day. I was going to say we never use this character, but, okay. you know, if you want to... <laughs> can, can we make it like on this day, we call on it this Jing day. Chi. Yes. Okay, okay sure. only on this day, but March 6th, it starts off Jing Zhe. So if, <laughs> if International Women's Day does not coincide with Jing Zhe next year, we have to call it, we, we have to call it Jing Zhe. Okay. Well, you just don't <laughs> disagree with any woman on this special day. It's their day. Okay. okay? All right. All right. Ellen Chu is always right. All right. Okay. So <laughs> this is called the Awakening of Hibernating Insects. 
Okay. And basically, well, in March, there's like rain and then there's like little lightning. And this lightning actually gives people this, this kind of like, it strikes the earth. <laughs> and with the sound, it gives you kind of like energy. Uh huh. And it provokes all the life to start up. That's right. right? That's right. Because everything's been hibernating through the winter. Mm-hmm. And in this two week period, we, we like to call it micro. I like calling it micro seasons. It sounds mm-hmm. fancy. Yeah, right? micro season. So, what happens is we have these weakening northeasterly cold weather systems. Ooh. And they meet up with these strengthening southwesterly warm and wet weather systems. Mm. And that's where the lightning comes. And then, so it's, we have this phrase in Chinese, it's San Yue Chun Lei. So it's the spring lightning of March. Wow. Well, actually, it's, it's I mean, yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is that all you have to talk about it? No, we can also talk about food. There are many okay. foods to eat too. So there is a special kind of oyster, clam. That's right, right? oysters. Okay, they're very plump at this season. Especially in the outlying island of Kinmen. Mm-hmm. And also we have a thing called jiu tsai, which what are... What is it called in English? Well, my mom would call it kuchar. Kuchar? Yes. They have it in the western well, Culture? she had it in Singapore. Okay. Um, but I think some people also call it like Chinese chives. Oh, yeah. So they're very long. It has a very strong oh, taste can you and smell also that? pungent smell. Yes, right? it does. Well, I like it. I like it in my dumplings. Mm-hmm. I like it in my zhou cai he. This kutra box yes it's a it's they call it a box which is a strange thing because it's, it's kind of really like a shell it's like a it's like a pastry yeah it's a pastry and it has what does it have in it's it kind of like sure. an apple pie apple pie <laughs> right yeah do you want to grab a little bit of this okay i'm not doing it you can grab the part i didn't touch if you want or you can grab this part okay it's up to you i'm not doing a very good job of cutting it <gasps> careful ooh, ooh. Ooh, everything's falling out. Would you Don't like cut um, my finger. Would you like a um, plastic bag to hold it in? No, I'm fine. Okay. So basically what comes in this is mm. the pastry shell and it has Chinese chives or kuchar in it. It has tofu. It has cellophane noodles. Mm-hmm. And whoa, the smell of this. I love it. Uh, the people that come into the studio after us are not going to love it mm-hmm. nearly as much as we do. Okay. I think it has pork in it too, doesn't it? It does. Does it have pork? An uh, egg. An egg. Mm-hmm. Yummy. So, but basically, the thing is with the Chinese chives, what's really interesting about it is it's the only vegetable, one of the only vegetables that people can use as mm-hmm. an offering for uh, when they pray to their ancestors. Mm. And they say that it's a symbol of resilience because it's a very resilient vegetable. That's what yes. we say in Chinese. Okay. Um, and it's hard to grow, though, mm-hmm. in a way. When you start off growing it, you have to put down mulch or like sawdust so that um, like around the base of the plant, mm-hmm. that's so that the white part, like you can imagine, it looks a little bit like Chinese onions, Onion, like, right. like green onions. Mm-hmm. You want the white part to be as long as possible because that's the delicious, tasty mm. part that people will use a lot in the foods. But we have a lot of the green part. They use both. Yeah, you can get flavor out of both, mm-hmm. but the white part has even more flavor, I think. I think the reason they didn't use a lot of the white one is because it'll be have too strong of a flavor. Mm. So the green one, it just kind of like give mm. you that mild, you know. More subtle. Yeah. Mm. Right? Mm. This is actually really good, Alan. Really too. good. I'm surprised. Like it. It's very nice. I think they um that what they do is they griddle fry these. Oh. So if you get them fresh off the griddle, they're Hot and crispy. Wow. Mmm. Yummy. So Chinese chives are they're in season at this moment during the two week micro season known as Jing. Jing. Today <laughs> it's called Jing Chi. But tomorrow normally... <laughs> it'll be called Jing Zhe. That's right. Okay. The awakening of hibernating mm-hmm. insects. Okay. All right. But we're gonna bring you another song. It's called Meng Xing Shi Fen. It's by Jonathan Lee, Li Zhong Shen. And the song in English would be The Moment at Which You Awake from Your Dreams? Yeah. Okay. You're listening to Feast Meets West. Second course. We're back now on the second course of Feast Meets West. And today I'm at the Garden of Hope Foundation Center in New Taipei City. The organization was launched 30 years ago in 1988 with the mission of helping combat child prostitution. 
Today, they have branched out to focus on women who are victims of domestic violence, and that covers a lot. They do everything from providing shelter and medical care to helping out with everyday needs and finding jobs. Today, I meet with Sophia Liu, and she shows me around the new Taipei Center, which at first glance looks like a brightly lit store. So here is a store, it's similar like the food bank. Mm -hmm. So people donate not only the rice, food, uh, but also the clothes, uh, goods. I mm -hmm. mean, because when they uh, leave the family, probably they have nothing. Well, especially if it's a case of domestic violence, sometimes yes. they have to leave in a hurry, so they don't yes. have any daily necessities, even toothbrush, um, simple things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah nothing, even, even their ID, anything. Mm -hmm. Last time, there's a mother and a son, they came here, but you know, the weather is very cool, but they only uh, wear uh, a t-shirt. We asked them, how come we don't have the coat of anything? Because the father throw them out from the family and say, I buy everything, so you have to take off everything and oh, get goodness. away. Yeah, wow. so we just give them the, the coat. You can see if uh, you are people in need, you can pick up free over mm. here. I just want to describe this little store that you have here. There's all kinds of things, everything from stuffed animals to um, children's clothing to adult clothing to shoes and boots, uh, even toys for the kids. Is this open to the public or is it open to only certain people? How does it work? People donate this stuff and we provide uh, for the family in need. So last year we served the 8,201 people. And, wow, uh, 8,201 yes. people. We're looking at this, we're in the office just in the back room of the store and there's a big whiteboard where you have your statistics on there. And as you can tell, the phone's ringing, so it's a very busy place too. Yeah, and uh, the so, so the, the diapers, the milk powder, the things we share is uh, almost three million uh, anti dollars per year. Okay, so we have yeah. a whole total there. It is just just under yeah. three million NT dollars. This is yes. the the total worth of all yes. the things that you've given away yes. over the year. Yes. So here we provide them jobs. You provide them work opportunities yeah. here. Well, here, yeah. Uh, like a store. clerk at the counter, or yeah. like yeah, yeah. taking care of all the goods and yeah. things like that, and display and. Yeah. yeah. This, this store is also open to the public. Mm -hmm. Everything you buy over here is going to turn to a donation. Mm -hmm. We can pay the the salary for these women, the rental, electric, everything. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. It's hard to imagine being able to help 8,201 people. You must have a big organization. Do you have a lot of people working for you? Actually, only four. Four? Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite busy over here. But we, we last year, we have five women mm -hmm. uh, work over here, and they all have a job last month. So we are very happy about that. That's fantastic. So I, I just want to make sure I get this right. Is this one location for your foundation? Uh, actually, the Garden of Hope Foundation in the whole country, we have uh, 17 branch. 17 branches, yeah. okay. And so this is the one branch yes. in, in... In New Taipei City, in the nearby the MRT Cai Liao. So this price that you have here, the nearly $3 million and the 8,000 people who have been assisted is yeah. for the whole, country. all of Taiwan. Yeah, okay. country. And this kind of center, the Garden of Hope, uh, we have in the Taizong, Tainan and Kaohsiung. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. So the same kind of place that we're in today, which is uh, includes a store and it includes a lot of different yes. things. Yes. Sophia tells me that they also run shelters for women, but those are at a secret location to make sure that the women are kept safe from their abusers. One of the abusers actually showed up at the store looking for his wife, but Sophia says they have a special connection with the police. We have the arm uh, with the uh, police station, so in three minutes, the oh. policeman will come. So you have a button you can press? Yeah. Yes. That's yes. fantastic. So it's great that you're working with the yeah, police. We, and also, we all, every, every door, we have back door, we have secret core or something to protect our women. Mm, that's really important, especially since a lot of them, you know, some of them work here as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would like to show you our uh, storage. All right, let's do it. We're going to go down into the basement and see what's downstairs. All right. Oh, wow. 
So you have a whole place here where you have a lot of goods in store here. What what kinds of things do you store? Yeah, the main store we have the milk powder and diapers, and that's what we need most because we don't want any infants get hungry. You know, yeah. they are innocent. And also we have some can. Well, uh, everybody is innocent, uh, yeah, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every people have some bad time, you know. Mm. And also the shampoo, you know, the food, uh, instant noodles and rice. Yeah, everything that you probably would need because um, you know it's not, it's hard time you know, to make someone money and in Taiwan we don't have the food stamp. Yeah. S- yeah. So uh, instead we just pro- provide them every month the social work will deliver the the submit the form that's what they need every month. Mm-hmm. So we will try hard to ask the people to donate to us. Mm. Yeah. There are also things like kettles, rice cookers. And Sophia tells me that they help the women get set up in new apartments. The Garden of Hope works with the local governments to repurpose old buildings to be used as shelters. The women pay a very low monthly rent and can live in subsidized housing for up to two years. That gives them enough time to find a job and get back up on their feet. It's hard for people to understand the incredible scope of the things that these women face. For many, they leave their entire lives behind to start a new life. Especially in our culture, even your family, your own parents can cannot support you. For example, our client, she worked here uh, last year, and uh, she suffering the domestic violence. So she go back to her brother's home. Actually, they are family, but her brother feel shame mm. of his sister's divorce. So he also beat her. Oh, oh so yeah, so she almost uh, lost her eyesight. Mm. She cannot see. Wow. So that's why uh, she walked over here, mm. and we provide some medical care. And uh, she is recovering now, mm. and now she can have uh, other jobs last month. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. It must be very gratifying for you to see the success stories. Yeah, especially she has a six-year daughter, wow. and that's the year uh, she went to uh, first grade. So. Uh, mother gave her a can mm-hmm. to save in the money, mm-hmm. but the uh, the daughter tell her mother, "I want to save the money, and when it's full, I want to donate to the Garden of Hope Foundation to help the more kids and mothers like us." Yeah, that's great. Only she's only six years old. Yeah, that is the motivation that for us to keep this kind of a job. Again, that was Sophia Liu with the Garden of Hope Foundation. Just a side note, she's also the first female umpire for professional baseball in Taiwan. And when I asked if she was hopeful that her foundation could make a difference, she told me to just look at the group's name, the Garden of Hope. Up ahead in the feast, we continue our Super Women show in honor of International Women's Day with the story of another superwoman, Kirthi Sridharan, who launches a four-part series in which she heads out in search of Indian food in Taipei, inspired by the foods that her own mother cooked for her when she was a child. When you hear the words Indian food, no matter who or where you are, an image pops into your head. For some, it's takeout boxes and whole chili peppers. For others, it's banana leaves and coconut curry. For me, it's my mother's chicken korma. But what does Indian food mean in Taipei? I'm Kirthi Shidharan, and here in this four-part mini-series called Give It a Chai, that's spelled C-H-A-I, I'm determined to give you an answer. My search for answers begins with a man named Mayur Shivastava. I sit down with him at a table inside Miksutras, his sixth restaurant here in Taipei. The sounds of live music and clinking glasses that usually fill the air are absent. I've come in before the place opens for the night. The gilded chairs and glass-topped tables make me feel like I'm in a throne room, and the stage is already set up for a live performance. Of the ten restaurants on TripAdvisor's Top 10 Indian Restaurants in Taipei list, six are branches of the Mayur Indian Kitchen, or MIK, Empire. The first, MIK-1, was opened seven years ago in 2011, and a new branch has popped up every year since, with one set to open in 2018. I asked him a little about what inspired his decision to open a restaurant here in Taipei. I saw that people really appreciate the Indian food, 
and they always almost 99 percent people they had very good reviews and their i mean about the indian food so i thought just to give it a try how it goes and of course uh, i was just a chef i didn't have that much money to open a full flash i mean like luxury restaurant there's that too the beginnings of the mik franchise were far from luxurious a tiny storefront by taipei 101 with some spacing issues takeaway shops when they open they keep their all the equipments or something outside on the road and they give the space to their customer to sit inside air condition i did exactly opposite i took the whole space for my kitchen and i asked my customer to sit on the street it was really embarrassing for some people because i remember that time many diplomats many journalists many vip people who never sat in that kind of condition even some gm of some hotels they came to my shop and they had indian food there it was uh, pretty cheap very very cheap and of course because my my cost was not that high and i wanted to people try something different and i started my first shop with the south indian food i just sold dosa and idli and sambar that's it in the beginning and that's how i picked up everything so it was just like 8 to 10 people can sit outside on a street and whenever police came i had to remove all those and i opened that shop just as like a takeaway guys it's like small tea corner people come can come have tea samosa dosa idli sambar that's it when asked why taipei his answer is clear enumerated it sounds like a question he's been answering for a while taipei why taipei because i'm like i'm from taipei and my that time my girlfriend now she's my wife also taipei and that time already i had a kid and as i as said like uh, i was very ambitious so i i i was in taipei since day one and i went to other parts of taiwan also but i found that many of the people in taipei they they have been to many countries first of all and they know about indian food much more than any other one in south or maybe other parts of taiwan third they really want they really if they like something or they want to try they spend money on that so they, it means they want to explore more things i ask him what the most popular dish on his menu is across all six restaurants and his response shocks me it isn't chicken tikka or lamb sag or butter naan at first glance it isn't even indian the most popular dish is uh, the tofu we roast in the tandoori oven because that's not only in between taiwanese that's even foreigners and indian people also like that because first of all i'd never tried paya tofu in india we have paya tofu in india but rarely we cook it for chinese people not for the indians because we have paneer and we love paneer like anything so when i when i tried paya tofu first time with and i made it in my in our own style it was really amazing because first of all if you eat paneer more than 20 30 grams you start feeling rich but paya tofu is not like that you can eat my i mean like four or five bites of paya tofu and you still feel like it's it's same spongy same texture just like cheese but it is not very heavy and it is also goes very good with any indian spices i also talked to him about what he thinks is so attractive about indian food to the average taiwanese customer taiwanese people they love to try the different cuisine which i learned from my own experience in taipei and our our uh, food has a lot of flavors he also speaks to the things that both cuisines have in common we indians can live without food that's i think everybody knows why every one of us doesn't matter wherever we live on this planet we want our own dal chawal and those kind of stuff dal chawal the classic north indian lentil and rice dish is a staple the kind of food you grow up eating in your mother's kitchen it's what you miss most when you're far from home same as taiwanese people love their food as well doesn't matter wherever they live they they want their chotu they want their deep fried chicken they want the rice maybe that's why the mik brand is so strong people eat at places that have their priorities in order and at mik food comes before everything else shrivastava seeks to give his customers the dishes they know and love but redefined for the taiwanese palate If you're up for a street side dosa, tandoori tofu, or just some good old fashioned dal, head over to Mayor Indian Kitchen and give it a try. Next week, join me as I talk with another restaurant owner who says that good old fashioned South Indian food is the only medicine you'll ever need. For give it a try, I'm Kirthi Shidharan.
Well, thank you so much for joining us for our program here today. We want to leave you with our addresses. Yes, and our address is P.O. Box 123-199, Taipei, Taiwan. And email us at androo at rti.org.tw. And next week on our feast, we are going to look for a food that's not only fulfill your belly and your heart, they also help you cure your illness. Wow. It must yes. Be magical magical foods uh-huh. we're gonna leave you with one final song today it's called Superwoman by Alicia Keys for Feast Me Swiss I'm Andrew Ryan and this is Ellen Chu the superwoman of the day that's right happy International Women's Day bye bye yeah. everywhere I'm turning listen are you listening <laughs> This is the sound of my country. This is the sound of Taiwan. Taiwan, a small island with a whole world of sounds.